Part two now of our conversation with UMass All Head Basketball Coach Greg Horenda. How good can this basketball team be? I really never think about it. I just think about getting better day by day. And, you know, we have it on the board here in my office. Let's get better and win and continue to work. I don't know how good. I, we can be, I, I guess I can answer the question in this way. We can be as good as our team improves. So if we don't improve, guess what? We're not going to get much better. But if we continue to improve, we can get better. And, and improving has a lot to do with your mental capacity. And so we have a system now. We have about, I don't know, 60, close to 50 sets, offense of sets that we run. It's almost like a football team where we have different fast breaks, different inside sets, outside sets, perimeter. So we have a lot of and they're learning it. They know every play. That we have out of bounds plays. We have about 25 defenses. So, um, you know, and I, I told our players when I interviewed for the job, I don't want to be, I don't want you to bore me, and I don't bore them. So today we're putting three new sets in, and it's February, whatever it is, sixth, and we have 50 in already. But the, these three new sets are going to help us win the next three games because with scouting and preparation, people learn what we do, and we need to constantly change. So I think we can, you know, go as far as we get better, and and as far as we play defense and rebound and, and make shots. If we defend and rebound and make shots and at the end of the game make plays, then we can we can go far. But you know, right now we haven't achieved we have not achieved anything. You know, we're eighteen and four and we're nine and two on the road and we're nine and two at home. So we're very consistent. No matter where we go, we play the same way. For us to go deep into our conference tournament, we're gonna have to beat a lot of good teams that are used to winning. And this program recently, the last two or three years, has not won and we're trying to figure that out which we have, and then if we're going to go anywhere, if we are lucky enough to get to the NCAA tournament and go deep, we're going to be playing even better teams. So I just think we can improve and get better, but to give you a number, I, I, don't, want to put, I don't want to put a ceiling on our team, to be honest with you. Success in basketball, is it about skill and talent, or is it about mental toughness? What's, what's the, the balance between those? You know what? You must have heard me speak before, because this is when we recruit, we talk about toughness and skill. So if a kid doesn't have toughness, we're not recruiting him, and if he doesn't have a level of skill, so it's a combination of toughness, which is which there, if you break that down, is mental and physical and spiritual. You know, you got to have a spirit. You have to have enthusiasm to play in our program. But if you have that level of toughness, like a, like a Max Kerman, and I like to call it the, the Max Factor, you know, so to speak, if you have his kind of toughness, then you don't need a great deal of skill, although he has skill. But, but if you have a great deal of skill, you don't need as much toughness. But if you don't have a quantity or a, a portion of each, it's very tough to go out into the Northeast 10 or, you know, play in Hockey East. I was in the Big East. I was in Conference USA. I coach professional basketball and toughness is, and work and skill are, are, are the magic combination. Did you look at this team? Any, any particular players surprise you? Or every day they surprise me. Good and bad. But, you know, what What surprises me most is that they come in with the same attitude every day. And I, I that's why I, I invite everybody. All of our practices are open because I want, I want to show off my team to to other people, to, quite, to be quite honest with you. What amazes me about our kids is every day they come in and they play hard, hard basketball. They, If I give them a new drill, they do that hard. If I give them an old drill, they, they remember it and do that hard. And, and, and it's just, I'm very lucky because not many coaches this time of year in February, winning or losing, love their their players like I do. Now, I don't tell them that every day, and hopefully they don't listen to, to, to this interview, but just, these guys just give me everything they have. And that's, you know, you can't, you know, that that's hard to do. In this world, in this, in, in, in this age of now, everyone wants to put Put everything on credit and they don't want to work for things and they want it's the you know the short you know I need to lose 10 pounds this week and I need these guys are in it for the long haul and that not that it surprises me but I just I'm very I'm very blessed by coaching the, the, this group of kids are you a players coach or are you a disciplinarian how would you characterize I'm yourself totally a players coach 95 percent players coach but then once they cross the line and either disrespect the team or the game I'm old school I get on them and they know the difference so I, I totally, we very rarely talk about bad shots because they don't take bad shots because they work so hard on defense. They have free reign a little bit on offense because I, I think any great, you know, sportscaster or anybody that's great, if you put, you know, if you try to slow them down and say, no, don't do that, don't ask that question, then you just take away the creativity of that, that person in any field. So same thing with an offensive basketball player. Once I tell them, no, you can't do that, then it's going to draw them back, and I try not to. So I think I'm a player's coach in that respect. I let them play offensively, but I'm old school on the defensive end that you have to stop people, you know, and it's in every sport. 
I mean, it's just at the end of the day, the, you know, the, the the Arizona Cardinals couldn't stop Pittsburgh. If they could stop Pittsburgh, they would have won the Super Bowl. And it comes down to everyone talking about the offense, but it's the defense. If you can stop somebody, you're going to win. That's been our philosophy. So I'm, an, oh, I'm, a, I'm a player's coach, but I got some old school in me. Allen Iverson hated practice, or so we're led to believe. Yes. In your mind, what is practice? It's, it's an escape from classes and the world, and it's make-believe land and it's it's a place where you get better where you imagine where you dream where you work where you sweat and where it all happens you know and we start practice with 30 minutes of music we throw on Sinatra Motown Broadway hits if they want to play their music whatever they listen our players listen to so there's there's excitement to start and then there's a level of work and there's a little a level of improvement and it's it's the best two hours of my life to be honest with you and I, I think the players look at our practice and at first looked at it as just total grind but now a- after you win games they're looking at it like wow this works we need they like coming to practice which is tougher under your direction practice or a game games because practices you can control you, know, you, you you stop you blow the whistle and you stop it in games you have guys with black and white jerseys on that can try to control the game they control your life sometime but seriously in games you know you now and I love games because that's that I mean that's the ultimate to compete but practice is where you can just kind of mold and it's it's almost like you're an artist and you mold your team and practice and then you play how you practice and I mean I know you know so Allen Iverson is you know I think he hasn't won a championship wherever he's been he hasn't didn't win one at Georgetown and he didn't win one in the NBA I think he got a gold medal I'm not I don't think he got a gold medal but but practice is where you where you become great I mean Allen Iverson's great but I think if you practice if the Detroit Pistons practice a little bit better we they might be a better team this year you mentioned earlier that you left at this job you had this vision, this idea, you had a, a game plan in mind. You've been a head coach before. Do you think you're different now than you were then? I think I've been a head coach now for three years, and I think oh, I'm still the same, but I'm probably more, believe it or not, I'm a little bit more relaxed and under control inside, you know, because I have a lot of confidence in what I believe in, in our offenses and our defenses, and I use the same exact offenses at Elgin Community College with non-scholarship players to Cabrini College with non-scholarship players now to, you know, UMass Lowell with scholarship players. So I've changed, but it's only been three years, but I, I've always been a top assistant wherever I've been, so I've, I've always kind of, I'm the same, I'm very enthusiastic, I'm passionate, but I think I'm a little bit more patient as I go on as a head coach. I think that's, you know, like anything else. You know, if you when my son was born, it was like the only child ever born. Now he's six years old, and I understand they fall down, and they get hurt, and they get up, and, you know. So I think with time, you get more patience and more experience. It's only going to make me a better coach. You played your basketball at Merrimack College. Would you have liked playing for you as a coach? Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah, because, no, I, I don't get on guys that play hard, and I played hard. So if they play hard, they, I'm going to teach them. If they don't play hard, I'm going to get on them. And I like to think that I played hard. You know, I, I went to high school in Jersey City, and in, in the off season, I used to go play with Bob Hurley, the legendary coach at St. Anthony's, and his son was at Duke. And, you know, he just, along with my high school coach, Jerry Halligan, just there was no other way to play. So I just played hard all the time. And then I played in, the, you know, in all the courtyards in Jersey City and in North Berg in New Jersey and all over New Jersey. And, and if you don't play hard, you would lose the game and not play for another six or seven games. So you learned that you had to play hard or else you wouldn't get back on the court. But as a, as a coach... I would, yeah, because I, I'd let my guys play, and 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 if they can play, and if they can do things, I let them do them. And once I find out they're not good shooters or they're not good ball handlers, then guess what? I don't let them handle it, and I don't let them shoot it. But if they can, I let them play. And I think now I've we've been coaching. I think this is going to be like our 62nd practice today. They are learning that they know what they can do and what they can't do, and and that's the key. Is sometimes you you know you have teams that try to do things they can't do, and you kind of look silly when that happens, but. And now they know what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. And if we all kind of do that together, you know, it makes for, for a better team. All right, Coach. Thank you. Good luck. Continued wow. success. Great questions. Well, and, with no, and I just want everybody to know out there that you didn't read any of those questions and they were, they were excellent. Thank you for your time. That is UMass Lowell Men's Basketball Head Coach Greg Horenda. This is the Riverhawk Radio Network.